Hey guys, welcome to Medifaction. Today, let's learn about liver tumors and nodules. First, let's see about the nodules or liver nodular hyperplasia. So, grossly, there are two types which are focal nodular hyperplasia and nodular regenerative hyperplasia. In case of focular nodular hyperplasia, the nodules will be well demarcated with borders but poorly encapsulated and are solitary. In case of nodular regenerative hyperplasia, there will be numerous micronodules and the liver will be entirely transformed into nodules. Other features In case of focal nodular hyperplasia, the peak age of occurrence is from 30 to 40 years and this comes for females in the ratio of 1 is to 10 with males. This will be asymptomatic and the associated condition over here is due to oral contraceptive pills use. Now here we have a connection. Since the 30 to 40 years of age, women are more likely to use OCP. Now we have a connection over here. Why women are having focal nodular hyperplasia which comes under reproductive phase. Whereas in case of nodular regenerative hyperplasia, this occurs in the age group of 50 to 70 years of age and these are equally in ratio with male and female and there will be presentation with symptoms such as portal hypertension. Now when we are looking grossly, when we are taking the cut surface, in case of focal nodular hyperplasia, there will be a central grey, white, depressed stellate that is star shaped scar. Whereas in case of nodular regenerative hyperplasia, there will be tan white, rarely hemorrhagic cut surface. So here you can clearly see the stellate or star like appearance in the cut section of the focular nodular hyperplasia. Now let's move on to liver tumors. So we know that there are two types of categories which are benign tumors and malignant tumors. Benign tumors consist of cavernous hemangioma which is the most common in liver, most common benign tumor in liver and hepatocellular adenomas. These are some of the common benign tumors associated with liver. Whereas, in case of malignant tumors, we have hepatoblastoma, hepatocellular carcinoma and cholangiocarcinoma. We will be learning in detail about all these three. And there are some other types of tu tumors which consist of combined tumors which is nothing but the combination of hepatocellular carcinoma and cholangiocarcinoma. Then we have Mucinous cystic neoplasms, intraductal papillary biliary neoplasia, angiosarcoma, hemangioendothelioma. Then we also have some of the lymphoma such as diffuse large B cell lymphoma, maltoma, which means mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, and also we have hepatosplenic delta gamma T cell lymphoma. And metastatic deposits also comes under other types of liver tumors. Now let's see in detail. First of all, hepatocellular adenoma. So this is nothing but a benign neoplasm developing from the hepatocytes or the liver cells. These are associated with oral contraceptives and anabolic steroids. Oral contraceptives comes under 30 to 40 fold risk. Pathogenesis For the pathogenesis, there are three subtypes. First one is HNF1 alpha inactivated hepatocellular adenoma. HNF means nothing but hepatocyte nuclear factor. So this HNF1 alpha 
encodes a transcription factor. The heterozygous germline mutation causes autosomal dominant MODE3. MODE3 is the maturity onset diabetes of young. So this MODE3 with hepatic adenoma gives a chance of second somatic mutation. And these are common in women. Since I told there are three subtypes, all these three subtypes show various morphology. In case of HNF1 alpha inactivated hepatocellular adenoma, the morphological features are these are fatty, devoid of cellular or architectural atypia or abnormality. And also the LFA BP that is liver fatty acid binding protein will be absent in these tumors. The next subtype is beta catenin activated hepatocellular adenoma. So this beta catenin is responsible for cell cell adhesion and it is also involved in transcription. So this has a dual role. And these type of adenomas are very risk for malignant transformation. And these are associated with oral contraceptives and steroids also. But this is found in both men and women. When we check the morphology, the beta catenin activated hepatocellular adenoma shows high degree of cytological or architectural atypia or abnormality. And this also shows overt areas of hepatocellular carcinoma. The important point is that the immunostatin for beta catenin shows nuclear translocation. Therefore, it becomes an important diagnostic hallmark. The third subtype that is inflammatory hepatocellular adenoma. These are shown by both men and women and these are associated with non-alcoholic fatty liver diseases. And there will be definite risk of malignant transformation and how means by activating mutation in GP120 which is a core receptor for interleukin 6 and thereby it activates the JAK-STAT pathway and it results in acute phase reactance overexpression. Speaking about morphology, in addition to hepatocytes and vessels, this also has areas of fibrotic stroma, mononuclear infiltrate since there is inflammation, then there is ductular reactions, dilated sinusoids and telangiectatic vessels that is thin vessels. There are also high levels of CRP and SAA which are nothing but proteins. CRP stands for C-reactive proteins and SAA stands for serum associated amyloid proteins. Not only that there will be 10% of these cases has additional B-catenin mutation. So these are the three major subtypes and this is the morphology and here this is the gross picture and here you can add, appreciate the pendulous mass arising from the liver and in the histological view we can observe the cords of liver cells with arterial supply without any portal tracts. Now let's move on to hepatoblastoma which is the most common liver tumor of early childhood. So this has two primary anatomic variants that is the epithelial type as shown in the figure and the mixed epithelial and mesenchymal type. Now let's see the pathogenesis of hepatoblastoma. Activation of WNT signaling pathway can cause hepatoblastoma. This WNT signaling pathway is a growth signaling pathway. Also, any mutation in the APC gene, which is a tumor suppressor gene, can cause hepatoblastoma. Sporadic cases have activation of beta catenin also. These are also seen in Beck with Whiteman syndrome conditions. And there will be 5 year survival rate with treatment is 80%. Now let's see 
ഹെച്ച് സി സി ഓർ ഹെപ്പാറ്റോസെല്ലുലാർ കാഴ്സിനോമ എയ്റ്റി ഫൈവ് പെർസെൻറ്റേജ് ഒക്കേഴ്സ് ഇൻ ഹൈ റേറ്റ്സ് ഓഫ് ക്രോണിക് ഹെച്ച് ബി വി ഇൻഫെക്ഷൻ ദീസ് ഒക്കേഴ്സ് ഇൻ ദി ഏജ് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ഓഫ് ട്വൻറ്റി ടു ഫോർട്ടി ഇയേഴ്സ് ദ മെയിൽ ഈസ് ടു ഫീമെയിൽ റേഷ്യോ ഈസ് ത്രീ ഈസ് ടു വൺ ഇൻ ലോ ഇൻഷുറൻസ് ഏരിയാസ് ആൻഡ് എയ്റ്റ് ഈസ് ടു വൺ ഇൻ ഹൈ ഇൻഷുറൻസ് ഏരിയാസ് ഇൻ ഫിഫ്റ്റി പെർസെൻറ്റേജ് ട്യൂമർ appears in absence of cirrhosis also aflatoxin which is a fungal carcinogen is can be involved hcc is the fifth leading cause of death in men worldwide now let's see the pathogenesis of hcc or hepatocellular carcinoma as we all already mentioned viral infections such as hbv and hcv can be a cause along with toxins like alcohol and aflatoxin can be a reason also hereditary hemochromatosis chromatosis and alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency can lead to hcc along with that activation on beta catenin and inactivation of p53 which is a tumor suppressor gene interleukin 6 which is an important cytokine in chronic hepatitis this interleukin 6 suppress hepatocyte differentiation and promote its proliferation by acting on hnf4 alpha which is hepatocyte nuclear factor 4 alpha now there can be certain precursor lesions for the hepatocellular carcinoma which are hepatocellular adenoma small cell change large cell change low grade dysplastic nodule and high grade dysplastic nodule the important points to be remembered here is that in case of hepatocellular adenoma low grade dysplastic nodule and high grade dysplastic nodule the focality in the liver will be single or multiple in the other two which is the small cell change and the large cell change it will be diffuse condition the potential that is a pre malignancy in the case of hepatocellular adenoma small cell change and also in high grade dysplastic nodule is positive there is high potency of malignancies and in case of small cell change and large cell change can be associated with cirrhosis whereas it is rare in case of hepatocellular adenoma and it it is usual in case of low grade dysplastic nodule and high grade dysplastic nodule glypecan 3 these stains most hcc and high grade dysplastic nodule but not normal liver Now let's move on to the morphology. Gross. As we have saw the picture earlier, it can be a unifocal mass that is usually large. It can also be multifocal, widely distributed, variable size nodule and diffusely infiltrative. When we are checking the microscopy, these are well differentiated to highly anaplastic undifferentiated lesion. in well differentiated and moderately differentiated tumors the trabecular pattern or in an acinar pseudo glandular pattern whereas in case of poorly differentiated forms there will be pleomorphic appearance with numerous anaplastic giant cells or small and completely undifferentiated or may even resemble a spindle cell sarcoma next is fibrolamellar carcinoma this occurs in less than 5% of hcc and 85% under the age of 35 these are single large hard tumor with fibrous bands coursing through so here we can appreciate the well differentiated oncocytes in mitochondria as in the form of nest and cords separated by parallel lamella of collagen bundles oncocytes in all cases where it is thyroid or liver in all the cases the oncocytes will have 
abundant eosinophilic granular cytoplasm with central round nucleus. So, let's see the clinical features and prognosis. Symptoms will be marked by underlying cirrhosis or chronic hepatitis and this spreads through hepatic venous system not through lymphatic system. In lab diagnosis there will be high serum AFP but which is insensitive as a screening. The most sensitive investigations are ultrasound, CT and MRI scannings. 5 year survival rate of large tumor is dismal, majority die within first 2 years. So what is the cause of death in HCC? It can be cachexia. Cachexia is nothing but the weakness and wasting of the body. Other reasons for the death in HCC are GIT or esophageal, variceal bleeding, liver failure with hepatic coma, rupture of the tumor with fatal hemorrhage. Now let's move on to the next type which is the cholangiocarcinoma. Cholangiocarcinoma is nothing but the carcinoma arising from the lining epithelium of the bile duct. And this is also the second most common primary malignant tumor of the liver. The malignant tumor of the bile tree arising from the bile ducts within and outside the liver. Liver fluke endemic areas will be having cholangiocarcinoma common more than HCC. Now let's see the etiopathogenesis. The risk factors for cholangiocarcinomas are opiatorchis and clonorchis infestations, also chronic inflammatory disease of large bile duct. Other than that, we have hepatotheliasis and fibropolycystic liver disease, also hepatic B and hepatic C with non-alcoholic fatty liver can also be a reason and the risk factors cause chronic inflammation. The chronic inflammation favors somatic mutation and epigenetic alterations also. The pre-malignant lesions of CCA. There will be biliary intraepithelial neoplasia, bilin, which has three grades, one, two and three. The low grade to high grade and the highest grade has high risk of malignant transformation, which is obvious. Along with that, the other pre-malignant lesions of CCA are mucinous cystic neoplasms and intraductal papillary biliary neoplasia. Morphology There are intrahepatic and extrahepatic. In extrahepatic, we have clad skin tumor, which are located at the junction of the left and right hepatic ducts. Here you can clearly see that. And the location may be perihilar 50 to 60 percentage which comes in under the extrahepatic and distal tumors in the common bile duct area in 20 percentage to 30 percentage cases and it is rare in intrahepatic which has only 10 percentage occurrence. So, the extrahepatic CCA grows. They shows firm grey nodule with bile duct and intrahepatic CCA grows shows similar nodule in non-cirrhotic liver. And here you can appreciate well moderately differentiated glandular or tubular structure lined by malignant epithelial cells and they typically initiate desmoplasia. So desmoplasia is nothing but dense fibrocollagenous thick stroma and also lymphovascular invasion and perineural invasion. Why perineural invasion means here you can see this is a nerve and this arrow part is epithelium. So there is 
perineural invasion in this condition. Now let's see the prognosis of CCA. There will be intrahepatic present as liver mass or cause obstruction to bile flow. The extrahepatic CCA presents with biliary obstruction, cholangitis and right upper quadrant pain. The extrahepatic CCA shows 15% at 2 years after diagnosis. Whereas in case of intrahepatic CCA, median time for diagnosis to death is just 6 months. So the common difference between HCC and CCA. HCC is the age, age, is, age of occurrence is 70 years and for CCA they comes under 20 to 30 years range. And the occurrence in male is to female ratio for HCC is 3 to 4 is to 1 and in case of CCA it is equal that is 1 is to 1 within females and males. The tumor marker for both we can use AFP which is very high and in case of CCA the AFP level will be normal but the neurotensin level will be elevated. HCC shows poor prognosis whereas CCA shows good prognosis. Hope you understood the video. Like, subscribe and press the bell button for more videos. Thank you. Thanks for watching.